waves strike the side of the boat in a repetitive thud slap, thud slap, thud slap. I look down and immediately regret it. All that deep, dark water. My mind starts rattling through all the possibilities of what could be lurking just beneath the surface. Giant squid, killer rays, death fins. I scrunch my eyes closed. I'm safe in the boat. I'm safe in the boat. I have to keep reminding myself that as long as I don't think about what might be beneath me, I'm fine. It takes a long time for the weather to improve. The clouds eventually turning from fierce grey to dirty white. As the waves mellow, so too does my seasickness. And I rush to catch up on the rest of my chores. As the newest member of the crew, I'm given all the jobs that no one else wants to do, like untangling the ropes and threading the bait. I work on my own, sat in silence, with my head held low. To make matters worse, we're out east today, which means the Isle of Rasse is directly in front of us, a mountainous strip in between Skye and mainland Scotia. It's where the girl lives, the one who's going to ruin everything. I don't want to think about that right now. Just before dusk, we start heading back. It's been a long day, but all of my despair melts away at the sight of the enclave. The walls rise above us like a welcome beacon. Flecks from the crashing waves make the ancient stones shine. Home. My whole body aches to be inside, to be surrounded by the familiar faces of my clan, to feel the spongy earth beneath my feet, to feel safe. From somewhere on the wall, the second chimes to announce our arrival. Why have they put her on centre post? says the captain. I follow his gaze and spot Agatha, one of the hawks, staring down at us from beside the turret. What the hell is she doing now? I can just about make out Agatha's arms pumping at the launcher. She hops about a bit and then ties something to the arrow and sets it on fire. She's going to shoot at us! That bloody idiot is going to shoot at us, says the captain. A thunderous twang rings out as the arrow arches high above us. The aim is poor, so the captain doesn't bother altering the boat's direction. Instead, he looks up and shouts a string of curses at Agatha. I keep my eyes on the arrow. It tears through the sky like a fallen star, its path unstable. A rogue wind catches it altering its course at the last moment, directly in line with us. I open my mouth to shout out a warning. Too late. It rips through the sails before anyone can react, instantly setting them ablaze. The flames lick across the deck and curl up the mast. I yelp, tripping over my long legs in my haste to stand up. The heat is intense, tightening my skin and drying out my eyes. One of the anglers upturns a bucket of water in an attempt to douse the flames either not realising or not caring that it also contains the shrimp bait. The creatures spill towards me and flit about pathetically until the flames engulf them with a series of harsh pops. The smell of scorched fish burns my nostrils. Abandon the boat, he asked the captain. What? No, the water's too deep. People leap overboard in all directions. I hover at the boat's edge, my legs frozen, staring down at the water. I can't do it. I can't. Someone pushes me from behind. I try to resist, but my knees give way and I tumble into the water. The coldness hits me like an avalanche of stone. I've fallen in deep. I spin around in circles, but I can't find the surface. My limbs flail to my right. A hazy orange smudge pierces the darkness. The blaze from the boat. I kick towards it. Something brushes against my leg. Panic grips my lungs and digs in its nails. I turn. There's nothing there. I turn back, but I can no longer see the boat. I no longer know which way is up. I twist my body from one side to the other, expecting something to burst out of the darkness at any moment. I'm trapped under the water. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. 